Are you trying to understand the connection between the MCV blood test and serum B12 levels? My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to dive into the connection between MCV and serum B12 levels, what you can do to understand what's going on in your body, how to track and optimize your levels of B12 in the context of MCV. As I said, my name is Dr. Taranella, and I make these videos to help you go beyond basic health, but they're not made for any specific individual. So please read video disclaimer before we jump into the video details. So what's the connection between this high MCV level and this serum B12 test result? Well, MCV refers to mean corpuscular volume, and it's the overall average volume or size of those red blood cells. As the average size increases, it means that the cells are released from the bone marrow in this larger state. This happens when the production of DNA is interfered with or slowed down. And of course, anytime a cell is dividing through mitosis, it needs DNA to transfer the information from one cell to the other cell, and that requires DNA-based pairs. There are certain nutrients that are needed to make those DNA-based pairs, and one of those, as you might have guessed, is vitamin B12. So as the level of vitamin B12 level is going down, the MCV level is going up, so they generally run opposite. Now, sometimes serum B12 tests are not predictive of the amount of B12 that's actually entering into the cell, and whether or not the cell is getting what it needs so that one can have a vitamin B12 level in the serum that's at 500 or 600 picograms per ml or sometimes even more and still have deficiency of vitamin B12. And the MCV blood test can help you understand this. So if you're taking B12 and you're seeing the levels go up in the serum B12, you should see that the MCV is coming down over time. But let's look at this a little more closely. So in this example, we have a vitamin B12 level, a serum B12 level that's 494 picograms per ml, and we have an MCV that's 100.2 femtoliters. So taking some vitamin B12 would presumably lower it, but how long is that actually going to take? Are you going to notice it in two weeks, four weeks, eight weeks? How long will it actually take? The RBCs or red blood cells live for three to four months. So this is the minimum amount of time that it will take, but sometimes it takes even longer. And in the meantime, your serum B12 levels may be going up and becoming very, very high because you're taking it on an ongoing basis. As long as your MCV blood levels are going down, it does suggest that you were indeed suboptimal or deficient in B12. Same thing with the RDW. The RDW should go down in conjunction with that MCV as you're taking the B12 and your red blood cells are becoming more and more uniform in the same size. But again, sometimes it does take much longer than three to four months. Sometimes you have to be on it for a good year. Now, of course, as I've discussed in other videos, there's other things that can affect the MCV blood tests. Check out my other videos on MCV for more information on what affects the MCV blood tests. Hopefully this helps you make the connection between elevated high MCV and serum B12 levels. While MCV blood levels can be linked with vitamin B deficiency, there are other reasons for it. And in my book, Don't B12 Deficient, I take a deep dive into this topic as well as other pieces of the B12 puzzle. It's a comprehensive guide that basically gives you practical strategies for maintaining optimal levels of vitamin B12. So in the next video, we'll look more specifically at how you know if you have the right amount of B12. So if you have questions on anything in this video, feel free to drop them in the comment section. And if you want a tailored, more in-depth answer, consider joining the membership program where we'll have more time and attention to dedicate to your question. Either way, I'll try and answer your question. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.